Hi everybody, this is Ingrid Vandervelt. You are on the road with IV, coming to you today from Miami, Florida, and San Francisco, California, where we are here with Craig Newmark of Craigslist.org. Welcome to the show, Craig. Great to see you. Thanks for being here. Hey, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. So, Craig, we're going to pop you into the middle of the screen. So, guys, if we could do that, please, that would be great. Thank you. So, Craig, this is so much fun to be able to talk with you. We really appreciate your time because you have a phenomenal success story as a business owner. And the people that are viewing this are all mostly entrepreneurs and people aspiring to start their business. What I'm really curious about, because we can do all kinds of research on, on how you found a Craigslist, but you really were kind of an accidental entrepreneur, wouldn't you say? Uh, very much so. I started this thing as a hobby and just persisted with my commitment, and somehow it became a real business. Well, let's talk about that a little bit because so many people actually aspire to run their own business and in your case you started Craigslist as almost a, a, a social hobby to connect you with other people in the Bay Area. Um, that's pretty much it. I figured there were things going on. This was the beginning of the uh, dot-com boom back then, early 1995. And I uh, just wanted to find out more about what was going on and to help other people figure out what was going on. So I started a simple CC list. It all grew from there. Well, okay, so I read that. I guess it was you had 240 people subscribing and you broke the system or something and realized you needed to do things a little bit different. I mean, is that the point when you knew you were sort of on to something? Well, what happened was that it spread through word of mouth and I was just using a simple email tool called Pine. It broke about 240 email addresses, but they were the only things that changed were that I figured I had to use a real listserv. I had to give the thing a name. I was going to call it SF Events, but friends like Anthony Bat told me that I already had a brand and I should keep calling it Craigslist. Okay, so you're the tech guy that came out of IBM, and then I saw you were sort of the internet, uh, or you were helping with internet strategy for Charles Schwab. So what was that like for a guy like you to be like, okay, I am the tech person behind all of this, and now I am the brand. Uh, what was that like? Well, I really didn't understand back then what a brand is. Um, people uh, helped me understand what that is, and it felt a bit surreal but after feeling a bit surreal and maybe being a little flattered, I just got back to work. Okay, so what, what happens now, and I've, I've got some uh, questions about overcoming some challenges, but since we're on this train of thought, what is it like now for you? I mean, when you're traveling around, do people recognize you when you're out? Um, I do get recognized once in a while, but it's fairly rare, and that's probably a good thing. Uh, it, well, I imagine so. I imagine so. Keep a little bit of anonymity because everybody uh, is using Craigslist. I know I've sold a lot of furniture on your system. Thank you very much. <laughs> we, we appreciate it. Okay, so Craig, tell us a little bit about the, some of the biggest challenges that you faced once you made the decision to turn Craigslist into a business, I know that you hired Jim Buckmaster as your CEO once you decided to, to turn it into a business. What were some of the biggest challenges that you faced? Well, the challenges had to do with uh, a lack of skill on my part in interviewing and hiring and a number of other matters. I didn't listen to advice from lawyers well enough. Um, and I was impatient regarding hiring and so on, so that about a year after turning Craigslist into a real company, at that point I realized that as a manager, I kind of suck and had to turn it over to someone else. Jim has proven to be a really good choice, and that's worked out pretty well. That allowed me to focus on customer service, and until the last year or so, I was full-time in customer service. Now I'm trying to get to half-time. Okay, well, give us some stats real quick on where Craigslist is today. How many people are using Craigslist? How many countries are you in? Give, give us a few stats there. Okay, uh, we're seeing about 50 million unique visitors, 55 countries, 567 cities, and we're getting probably close to 13 billion page views per month. 
Unbelievable. Okay, so back when you then brought Jim on board and you were talking about some of those challenges and you said, I didn't listen to my attorneys well enough. I mean, did you ever find yourself getting into some pretty sticky situations um, or were these all challenges that were fairly easy to overcome? Um, well, problems on my part did get us into some sticky situations, but that's in the past. Jim does a great job of running things now. Can you give us any examples uh, that some of these entrepreneurs can relate to? Well, early on, uh, I did give away some equity. That is, I granted some equity to a guy who was a who uh, became a former employee, and he decided to sell it, which uh, let's say caused us some uh, moments to of eBay. reflection. Uh, he did sell to eBay. Yes. And that was. Uh, did I understand? Twenty-five percent was sold to eBay. Something like that. Yeah. So, what was the problem that that caused, and how did you overcome that? Well, just the whole uh, the whole deal was a challenge. It was one that Jim plus our lawyers were good at handling, um, and that uh, you know they did a good job with that. A very good job. The more I understand about our own uh, corporate governance. Okay, so what is the biggest challenge that you face today inside Craigslist? Okay, um, we are having difficulty, for example, with uh, ad spammers. And sometimes we can't introduce technology as quickly as we'd like. For example, multiple language support. We only installed it a, about a year ago, and we've still only translated into five other languages. Interesting. Okay. And I understand that on that ad spammer issue that, uh, you know, one of the things we're going to talk about today is doing the right thing. And one of the things that I read about you is you said, you know, we're, we aren't litigious, but in this case, uh, this is one of those times when Craigslist has chosen to um, enter a suit against the, the company that is doing the ad spamming. Is, did I understand that correctly? And what's your intention with that? Well, pretty close. We're uh, taking into court the people who sell ad spamming technology. The idea is that they're the uh, source of the problem from our point of view, and we uh, need them to stop. Okay, well, Craig, uh, we really appreciate you talking about uh, some of the, the challenges that you faced in starting Craigslist, and we're really looking forward to coming back with you in segment number two, where we talk a little bit about the money behind the business, because we're all fascinated with this. So thanks very much, Craig, and we'll see you again in segment number two. And we'd like to thank our sponsors, Beauty, Estilo, and Rochelle Ray. Thanks very much. We'll see you in segment number two. Thank you, Craig. Thanks.